What is up, guys? Sony just built a car. Sony has now entered the EV space. This is going to get really interesting. And you know what else is very interesting? Mercedes, I mean, I know this is old news, but Mercedes hit level three autonomy and everyone's saying it's beating Tesla. We're going to debunk this after I react to the Sony vehicle because it's very interesting. And if you guys haven't heard about it, it's actually pretty, it's very interesting. So let's get down to it. Smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go. What is up, guys? Sony just built a car. Interesting looking car. So technically, this is a joint venture between Sony and Honda and the... Okay, stop. Honda. <laughs> Honda. Just, I mean, look, take a look at their sales. For the past three years, they've been going down and down and down. I mean, I'm not saying they're a bad car. They're a great car, but no one's buying. No one's buying. Anyways, I mean, interesting to see how Sony, which I have a lot of respect for, collaborating with Honda. Anyways, I think there's better choice, better choices out there. But anyways, let's keep going forward. Brand name is called Aphila. As you can guess, this is fully electric, but there's no information on range or price. Ah, there's no information about range and price. You know what that means, right? It's a prototype, and we all know prototypes are easy to make, but when it comes down to production, Production is, I will let you finish that part. Let's go. What I can tell you is that this will have LiDAR to enable level three self-driving. That means eyes off and hands off. You also get a- No, stop. Like, <sighs> eyes off and hands off. Where? Where? This small part of San Francisco? Like, where? Like, ah, oh, LiDAR. And level three, like, like level, th okay, Mercedes had the same thing. Well, well We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that after this part, but anywho, let's keep going forward. A light bar that goes all the way across the front end, That's actually pretty right in the middle, like you get a digital display that can show your charging, okay. or it can show you things like the weather. So that's pretty To get cool. in, like it's gonna that. use this camera for face recognition. Mm. Not Inside, but, you get okay. this giant glass roof. Your seats are going to be environmentally friendly. You have a screen that stretches okay. across your entire dash, a yoke steering Ooh. wheel to improve your visibility of that screen. I like you have that. a regular mirror, digital mirror, Ooh. but it gets way better. Okay. Because this is a Sony car and Sony also makes PlayStation, no, you can play PlayStation while you're charging. Now that is flipping cool. That, that's awesome. The fact that I can play PlayStation. That's pretty cool. And I do like the fact the whole thing is a screen. I mean, the way they made it, they made it for full self-driving one day, maybe five years, 10 years, or when they could actually produce it, maybe end of the decade. And when full self-driving is solved, thanks to Tesla, one day we can just sit in the car and just play freaking Call of Duty or something, man. That's freaking awesome. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. I mean, this is getting me a little hyped. I'm not gonna lie. Of course. So not only is the screen resolution insane, I can actually watch movies and then I can swipe and throw it on either side. That's convenient. I like it. That's actually pretty cool. Where'd you go? But I can also choose different themes. Right now we're in the standard theme, but I think I'm gonna choose a Spider-Man theme. Once I apply that, my ambient lighting wow. is gonna turn red That's cool. and I get a Spider-Man background. And I can That's also cool. do Fortnite. Yeah, not a fan of Fortnite, but that's cool, you can change the theme and all. That's actually pretty cool. And that's it. Huh. Okay, interesting. Now obviously. This is a prototype and we all know the prototypes are easy. You can, you know, do so many things to the car that this car can do this, can do that and all this. But when it comes down to the actual production, <laughs> it's a whole different vehicle. Like they, they find out that they can't do this. They can't do that. It's not possible. Anyways, I wonder how much it's going to cost. Comment down below. How much do you think this Sony vehicle, Sony Honda vehicle is going to cost? Curious to know. But that's Sony. Let's go ahead and see what Mercedes is up to. And apparently they're the first certified level three autonomy car company in the US. Ah, that's conditional, hands-free driving and only in Nevada for now. Okay, so just only in Nevada for now, but which part of, anyways, let's go read some stuff. Let's see what kind of info we can get from here because I did do some research, but you know, I'll, I'll bring that up as we go forward. So according to Mercedes drive pilot system, they say that on suitable freeway sections and where there is high traffic density that you can do this. Okay. So far it's limited, but Let's see what else they say. The car can also take over the bumper to bumper crawling duties up to 40 miles per hour without the driver needing to keep their hands on the wheel. You can only enable this in high traffic duties and only up to 40 miles per hour. Okay, I think Tesla can do more than that, but okay, let's 
Let's keep going forward. When engaged, the system handles lane keeping duties. How about lane changing duties as well? But okay. Stays with the flow of traffic, navigates to destinations programmed into the nav system, and will even react to unexpected traffic situations and handles them independently. For example, by evasive maneuvers within the lane or by braking maneuvers. I mean, okay, that's what they're supposed to do anyways, but check out this line over here. All of those are essentially extra capable highway cruise controls where the driver must maintain their attention on driving, typically keeping their hands on or at least near the wheel and be responsible for what the ADAS is doing while it's doing its thing. But that's, that's what, that's what level two Tesla is doing right now. I mean, I'm so confused. What, if it's level three, why do you have to keep your hands on the wheel? I don't know. I'm a little dumbfounded here. Comment down below. Maybe I'm getting something wrong here. What level two or what level three is. The question is, okay, you get this vehicle. You, you have the level three, which is very limited, by the way. I mean, 40 miles per hour. And you need to have your hands on the flipping wheel. That doesn't sound level three to me. But anyways, let's, you know, keep going forward with it. Where can you do it? Like for Tesla FSD, you can do anywhere parts of the US in what parts of Canada when you have it. But here you can only do it in Nevada, not even in California yet. And in Nevada, you only have small sections of it. Ah, oh, God, I don't know. But anyway, I did more research to this and here are the things, I mean, this level three is a bit misunderstanding because there's only limited things this thing can do. And the things that I found out is that, well, it's LIDAR, so it needs to be places that's mapped. Hence why I keep saying a small part of Nevada or California. So it's not scalable. It's not something that you can, get done that everyone can use in the whole country compared to Tesla's FSD. Another thing is that I mentioned 40 miles max, you kidding? Tesla can go in the kilometers, F full FSD. It can drive better than humans. As I mentioned earlier, there's no lane changes. I mean, what kind of an FSD is that when you don't have lane change system? I'm doing some more digging. Apparently this thing can only operate in good weather. So forget about, you know, turning this on in the rain, in the snow. Some are saying even at nighttime, you can't even turn this on. It has to be during the daytime. And it's sun sensitive, so if the sensor gets like hit with the sun, it'll just, you know, take you off autopilot, which is just weird. And apparently, apparently the bumper, the bumper is not really true because the lead car needs to be 100 meters in front. I don't know. I know this is still new and they're still working on it, but you can't really call that level three when you have all of these limitations. Heck, a Tesla level two has more capabilities than this and less limitations. And they say that the mighty FSD level two of Tesla can't do, can't beat it. Come on, get out of here, man. It's just freaking fear mongering and short sellers, all that kind of stuff, man. Come on. The thing is guys, Tesla, they don't do this level two, level three, level four stuff, right? They're right now mastering level two. Once they have mastered level two, they're gonna say, all right guys, we're done with level two. We're gonna move on to level three right now. And uh, whether we're in the beginning, mid or late stages, we are at level two. What Mercedes did is that they are at level two plus, you can say, not even plus, I wouldn't even give them a level two plus, but you could call them a level two plus, but they're calling it level three just to stay ahead and for attraction and a little bit of advertisement that, hey guys, look, you know, Tesla isn't that far ahead of us. We Mercedes are doing it better than, better than them. But then once you sit in Tesla and user FSD, FSD beta, you will notice that, oh man, moon to earth, right? This is, this is different. And again, guys, once Tesla is fully mastered level two, they're gonna say, yep, we're done level two. Now we're gonna move on to level three. This will take us another two, three years to do level three. Then we can go to level four and yari, yari, yara. That's how Tesla operates. And that's how they go forward. Not saying this stuff, oh, look at us, we're on level three, but we can't do anything because we're so limited. <laughs> what? But anyways, guys, Tesla's Q2, I think is going to be a, obviously it's going to be a record if you compare it to Q2 of 2022 because we had that shutdown in Shanghai. But in this video, I predict Tesla's total deliveries and production of Q2 of 2023. It is a sheesh moment, but let's see if I get it right. We'll do an update next month as well, but check this out. Subscribe for more and subscribe to the channel and support the channel by becoming a channel member or getting some merch. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.